Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're going to look at creating enlarging evenly spaced dots in Adobe Illustrator. Now I'm using dots but you could make any shape that you like. I'm going to start with a brand new document. It's going to be the size of my screen 1920 by 1080. Now we're going to start with the shapes that we want to use. So I'm going to create some circles. I'm going to make sure that they're filled and for me I don't want them to have any stroke. So I'll just click in the document and I'm going to start with a very small circle of two pixels. And then I'm going to come over here and make a much larger one. This one's going to be 40 pixels in size. Basically you just want to peg the smallest and the largest of your circles. We'll go to the selection tool, select over both of these shapes. We're just going to click here to vertically align the center just to make sure that they're on the same alignment. Now we're going to use a blend, so we'll choose Object and then Blend and click Make. Then you can double click over here on the Blend tool because we're going to specify how many steps we want. So I've got a 2 pixel starting one and a 40 pixel ending one. So I'm going to make 37 shapes. So that's going to be the first and the last plus 37 in the middle. I'll click OK. The problem with using the Blend tool for this effect is that it's obviously not evenly spaced and there's no way with the Blend tool that you can get evenly spaced objects. So we're going to have to work around this. What the Blend tool does give us is enlarging shapes. So that's handy. We're sort of halfway there. So I'm going to select over all of these shapes. This is a Blend. So to expand the Blend, we're going to Object and then Blend and then Expand. It's really important that you use this Expand option so you break the shapes out of the blend. Let's go and see the layers panel. In the layers panel right now we have a group of objects and what we want to do is break these objects out of their group. So we'll choose object and then ungroup. What we want is just paths. So now everything is still selected and leave it that way because it's going to save you a little bit of work. We've got the selection tool selected up here. So I'm just going to click on one of these shapes. It does not matter which one I click on. And now we're going to the Align panel and you can get to it by choosing Window and Align. And what you want to do down here is to select Align to Key Object because by selecting one of these objects in addition to selecting everything, you'll see it's got an extra sort of line around it. It's our key object. And so I'm going to click here on Align to Key Object and that opens up this Distribute Spacing option. Now I want all of my objects to have one pixel between them but you can set that value to whatever you like and then we'll click here on on horizontal distribute space. This has closed our objects up but if we have a look in here you'll see that every single one of these is separated from the next by a space of just one pixel. So what we've got now is what we set out to do is to have a series of growing objects. Here they're growing at a very small pace. If we started with a small object and ended up with a really big object then we'd have them growing at a faster pace, particularly if we only used a few steps in our blend. But we've got them evenly spaced. Now you can do this with any object. You could do it with stars or dashes or squares or whatever you like. But you can also, once you've done this, you could make a brush from this which would allow you to stroke a path with the brush. Now heads up on this, there is going to be some distortion, a little bit of distortion when you do this with a brush. But this is what you would do. You would select all of your objects and go to the brushes palette. Again, you can get to that by choosing window and then brushes. Click here on the plus sign and we're going to make an art brush. I'll click OK. I'm going to scale everything proportionally and if we want to be able to change the colour then we would set this to tints and click OK. Now we can go and select a tool to use. In this case I'm going to use the pencil tool but you could select any tool that you like, any sort of painterly tool if you like. So I now have my pencil line selected. I'm going to go here and click on my art brush and it's applied to that brush line. As I said, there is a slight amount of distortion here, but that's how you can get elements like this. I hope this video has been of help to you and that you've learned things about Illustrator of which you were previously unaware. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.